Let's go. Hello, everyone. This is Don Cherry's Grapevine podcast here with the family. And uh, Dad, the playoffs are coming up soon. And just before we get started, can I ask you, when you were coaching, did you ever, uh, how did you get the team prepared for the playoffs? Did you, was there anything different in strategy or they had to get up for it or what? Well, you have to get your goalies ready. That's the main thing. You go in, you have to keep them very happy. And um, I remember Cheevers, he was, t- he, you think it'd be easy with him, eh? Because he to always- To keep them happy. What does, how do you well, keep a keep hockey player in, happy? They can't be hurt. They can't have nagging injuries. You have to watch if they, because they won't say anything because, uh, well, Cheevers would, Jerry Cheevers was our goaltender. He was number one goaltender, but you had to be very careful. You had to have them right in the top form. Oh. And, um. You had to have them rested. You can't work them too hard near the end. Uh, and uh, the rest you, of the team. Because a lot of times you were in a dogfight, like right going right down to the wire with yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, with Buffalo. Buffalo had a terrific. But I hate to say it, and I know some people in Buffalo listen. They had they had a team that was unbelievable. They they had uh, the French Connection line. They had a good goaltender. They had everything going. So, Danny Gare. Jimmy Schoenfeld. So when you had to keep your goalies healthy, but you were in a dogfight for first spot, like well, how, how did you not had to burn, do it, burn out your goalie then? No? Well, I, I was fortunate in Boston. I had two terrific goalheads. We won't go into Jilly Gilbert again, setting a record, still stands, 17 straight wins. But you had to keep your goalies ready. And then guys like Jean Rattel, which were a little old. We had a couple of guys that were a little old. You, um, I, I think we talked about it last week. Um, you dress them. I would all, I would never, ever, ever not dress a guy. I want him to come in the morning, like we said last week, cut his sticks and get him ready and, you know, get, and get, you know, have their toast and tea in the morning and their, uh, have their meal and have their nap and the whole deal. Keep, keep them in the groove. As you they want say. to keep their routine the same. Yeah. Uh, I would never, because when I, 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 I've been with teams, when I was with Rochester, we had a terrific team. I mean, we were going one three years in a row. We we uh, not dress guy, and I could see you threw him off. Not dress the really good older yeah, players yeah. just to give them a rest. Well, but we it, thought he thought it was rest, and I and I I would always play the guys, and then when we get up a big score or we get up a couple of goals or something, I they wouldn't play, and they knew what I was doing. Yeah, that's good. And the third and fourth line would play more, so that's how I got my team ready. Yep. Speaking of uh, goalies, Dad. A lot of Toronto Maple Leaf fans are mad at you because you said Campbell, their goalie, was cocky, and they think that that was a slight against him. No, I I don't know how they say. I should have explained it a little more. I love a cocky goalie. One thing I love is a, a goalie that's got lots of confidence. And if you if you ever seen uh, uh, Terry Sodchuk, I mean he you you. When he played, he he had that cocky. I I should say cocky. I guess so. Co- you equate cockiness with um, confidence. Yeah, it's the same to you. Yeah, it's the same thing. But a same. lot of people don't think it's the same. No, well, I think it was the same. And the guys in the and that were really good. They had that air about them. Air. They had an air. And he he's the same way. He's laughing all the time. He was even he's laughing every every time I see him. Well, we'll see. The big deal. As I've said before, and, and Howard Berger did a, a great um, uh, what was it? blog. He does a blog. Howard Berger used to be a reporter and on the fan and on, on I don't know what newspaper he was, but now he does a Some blog. Probably. Yeah, he does a blog anyhow. He did a great blog, and um, he, he that's what he asked me like what, like how do you get ready and 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 as I said to him, the season regular season means nothing like Zippo nothing. And I'll go back and I'll say it again. Uh, Tampa was so good two years ago. Remember, they were up. <laughs> Columbus walked in and just snapped them four straight. Doesn't mean a thing during the regular season because it's altogether different hockey. Let's hope. Although, watching hockey night in Canada, I hate to say it, last night, I'm doing a sun. This is on a Sunday. The violence. And I'm thinking, <laughs> where, but like, what happened? Did something happen? Did you miss something? Did I, like something happened. And like what? What happened? And they were still talking about uh, Wilson. Yeah. And he and you know, he didn't think it was anything. Not to go into it again, but he didn't think it was anything. That's why he took off his sweater and let on he was Superman. You know, up to the front. He thought it was funny. And 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 they were talking about the violence of the game and it, life is changing. And holy, I mean, I 
I, 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 I'm not criticizing them. Well, I guess I am criticizing them. Well, it was the hard thing was that they go, oh, he punched him in, you know, Wilson punched the ranger in the back of the head. Punched him on his shoulder. He punched him on his shoulder. He left like, his gloves on. And then Panarin ju- has jumped on his back. What is he supposed to do? Guy jumps on his back. I Panarin, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, he's, he's out for the season probably. Well, three games. But. <laughs> two, ga- two games left. And let's say the, the, the Jim Nolan, I think the guy's name is Jim Nolan, the owner. Isn't that the owner? What is he? Anyhow, he's the head guy. He fires the guys the next day. Now, they were going to fire them anyhow? What, what happened? I mean, it, I, mean I, I couldn't believe the, the, the furor over the thing. And Paris, it's a good job we got Paris as, as the safety guy or what, what, do you, yeah. what do you call him? Yeah, he's director of player safety. I mean, he, he made the right decision. Absolutely, but it was the wrong. But it was the hardest decision. Yeah, it, it, easiest thing for him to do. And and believe me, they will get somebody in there be a sweetheart. I think they they uh, they're talking about uh, you know they they mentioned uh, uh, Korea. Yeah. I mean, he, you know, he played the game sweet. Well, I mean, he was a good player. Don't get me wrong; he'd be sweet. But, but he, he he would have suspended guys. Everybody says you know Paris, he's a goon, he's a dummy, and all that. He four years in Princeton. Call it, which is, which is even in a lot of ways more prestigious than Yale or, or Harvard. Is that right? And he was voted um, by Sporting News one of the most intelligent athletes in well, sports. Oh, I won't hold that against him. And, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, the, but you're right. The, like, like, you know, many of the guys last night said, well, he should have suspended him for the optics. Well, you can't do that. You can't say, well, nothing really happened, but... Mm, Kind of look bad, so we're going to give you a, well, a game or two. Well, that's the old story. They're worrying. They're worried about the press, you right? Know? They're worried what, what, about now. It's right. Yeah, it was last night. They were ta- they were talking about the violence of the game. It's changing. Everything is changing. And I'm thinking, holy smoke, something else happened. Something <laughs> happened. Like like if somebody did something. Thank goodness for Bielsa. He was the only one that seemed. Yeah, Bielsa's good. Yeah, he was the only one. He fought Tom Wilson too. He said. Oh, he he. I like Bielsa. I, I, how do you pronounce that? Bieska, I think. How do you? I, anyhow, I always liked him when he played, and, and he's good on television. Thank thank goodness he's there. I mean, uh, you, know, but you better like, be careful. And he just goes so far. Yeah. He knows. Does he keep pushing the line like uh, you well, did? Well, he's pushing the he... line, but he don't go too far. <laughs> he should know. <laughs> yeah, but it, it just what a strange year for the Rangers. Well, you know, they signed that 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 uh, D'Angelo nine million dollar contract, yeah, and right. then a week was it two weeks in? He gets a, a one way contract, I think, too. Yeah, and he gets into a fight with the goalie, and they send him home. Nobody will touch yeah, him. Yeah, but he'd been in trouble before. So he, he's, he had he'd he'd, he'd have jumped in. Yeah, so he's four point five million dollars sitting at home because nobody else will nobody else will take him. And afraid. then that Panarin, he, he got he got that. Uh, he said something bad about Putin, and then all of a sudden, all these rumors were coming out about him from Russia. So he had to take some time off, and then you had this thing. Remember Putin at the Olympics? That was the one thing yeah. he wanted to win was hockey. It's Sochi, yeah. And he came. The only thing he came to was the hockey. And he was sitting up at, by by secret, eh? Yeah. And I said, and I somehow or other I saw the marsh pigs, and I said. They are not the same marsh pegs that they use in the National Hockey League. The pegs, those are the pegs to hold the goal yeah. post to, you know, hold the goal post. Steady. I said, that could cost them dearly, you know, during the game. This is no kidding. That's why everybody watched Coach's Corner. And what happened was, they, they, I think they were a high school or something. They went up and they stayed up and they scored a goal. Was it an overtime? I think it was an overtime. Anyhow, it was an important goal. It would have been the winning goal. And they lost, and they got put out. And they they should have won the Russians that year. Yeah, well, if they come in second. Canada would have beat them. Well, at least they'd have they be in the final game, and anything can happen. But I remember uh, Putin was that the not that I not the, I'm not well, if you cheering needed- for Putin, but he looks. He, Pretty tough guy. Yeah, I wouldn't cross this guy. Too well, much. I'll tell you if that if they needed motivation, that would have been uh, that would have been it. Eh, having Putin but, watching you. Yeah. yeah. The, so, and, but he got but but he but. Panarin, he said something bad about Putin, and then all of a sudden, all these accusations came oh, out yeah. of Russia. So they have they've had a tough year, the Rangers. But uh, like, but I, I like as you say, I can't believe like everybody who's saying, oh well, that statement that, that they said, which was awful, what they what they put out about Paris was, 
it was, you know, wasn't fit to do. I think do you were mad. Hey, yeah. But you know what I think that, I, I got to say, you know where I think it all started was the ra- the Rangers on-air guys. Like, oh, they're insipid whining about Tom Wilson. Whining. And, and doing the, you know, and going on and on about it. It just started to snowball. So then, you know, you put it on the internet and you hear them whining about Tom Wilson and how terrible he is. And then it, it starts getting momentum, right? Like, if if... You had the Washington guys talking about it. Nothing would have happened. Yeah. But the Rangers guys, and then, but I mean. Well, that's why I say Wilson thought it was, he didn't think it was anything. I didn't think it was anything. He never took his gloves off when he take, mm, take your gloves off. You, you're looking for trouble. I mean, yeah, because he, he, could, he could have taken the gloves off and he could have pounded him in his Oh, ground. he could have, he, he gave him a couple of swats and that was it. And they said, well, his helmet came off. Well, who's, it's not Tom Wilson's fault his helmet came off. He does, he's one of those guys that doesn't put his helmet on. Well, right? he took it off. He takes it off. And... No, no. No, Panarin. During... Panarin, helmet yeah. came off. But he does, he's one of those guys that has a really loose yeah, strap. Yeah, and then and we won't go into it again, but he did. And Wilson took his sweater off and everything. And they, look, but he made it worse. As you say, you know, sometime the karma comes around. And now Wilson's he out. He got a knee last night. He got a knee. Yeah. Saturday night. And uh, that guy... Mm. Uh, you know, but the funny thing, you and I were talking about it, Dad. We're seeing that a lot in yeah, minor, in minor, ho- minor. Never ho- used to see knee. Never, we never saw a knee. And once they came in with the hitting, like Hit the head, the, head. Sh- the head shots. So the minor referees, they side on the the, 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 the they go on the side of caution. Yeah. So if you hit a guy with your shoulder, shoulder to shoulder, they'll call it a head shot. Yeah. That your Regardless, head is, and, and you know you can't blame them. You know because well they got to cover themselves. They know right. the parents are watching in the in the. So now what the kids are doing is they if they got a guy lined up, they don't want to hit him with the shoulder because they know they're going to get a penalty. They'll, yeah. they'll stick their knee out and and clip the guys that are going by. And we never used to see it, but never. the last time we didn't, you know, we didn't go out this year. But last year we were out. I bet you we saw 10, 12 yeah. kneeing penalties, which we and never, never, you know, that never used to be them. a dirty. That it was one of the dirtiest things you could do. You talk about violence. I mean, that to me, that's a record. They wreck a guy's. But the thing Career. is, people that don't know a lot about hockey, you know, that are watching those minor minor midget games and all that, they don't they don't see that, right? So they they don't they don't visualize that as as uh, violence and everything. So you know what did your mother used to say? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. With good intentions, and that's that's how it's evolved, right? Well, anyhow, we we won't go talk about that. I want to talk about congratulations to Dave Barr and. Um, all his assistants, they did a great job. Yep, Canada won now, you're, yeah, the under-18 under tournament in Texas, of all places. Did they draw? Did it? I didn't see. No. 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 Well, they were originally what happened was they were supposed to have it in Michigan, but, oh. um, but it was, the, you know, Michigan, they're, they, you know, they're a Republican state, so no, you can't come, or a Democratic state, so, you know, no, they shut it all down, and Texas said, yeah, we're open. Yeah, we're so, open for business. Yeah. Now, you say, and you've been involved in this, you say he should be the coach of the juniors. I think, like, a guy like that, like like you said it too, Dad, one guy should be the coach f- forever. Well, uh, the United uh, States, a lot of people at under 18, you were, I, I, in fact, I asked, why Why do they have some, the United States won so many. Oh, yeah, they're like, yeah, they've won. Now, like, tell, tell a reason why. Well, because the, they, that, that the uh, the U.S. Development League, like that team, they'll, they'll get the best players and they'll be on a team all year, right? So they play together. They'll, they play together. Not thrown together like no. the Canadian kids. They, they play all year. And then what happens is it's not a, it really isn't a best on best tournament because all, a lot of the kids that would be, that played this year, and it wasn't even a contest with Can- like Canada, it wasn't even close on any of the games, um, a lot of them would be in, you know, they might be injured from the from the CHL. They'd be in the playoffs, like that. Berard, who who, who scored all the goals, terrific. He'd probably be in Edmonton. He'd probably be in the playoffs with the yeah. Oil Kings and Shane Wright. You know, hopefully he would have been in the playoffs with Kingston. And those two guys led it. So it's not a really a best on best tournament. They, you just kind of cobble together. You know what? What teams? It's same with it's same with the Russians and all that. There, it's it's not a best on best. But this year it was because none of the kids none of the kids were playing. Yeah, I just like to jump in and say, can you imagine the announcers if they were United States announcers, and seven of the top te- of the of your team w- and they won it, and and 
Can you imagine, or never mind the yes, the nice the Canadian announcers, why they'd say that's the greatest uh, development of the world? Now GTHL had seven guys, right? But who were yeah. they? Seven. The GTH. Uh, yeah, you Brent Clark from Don Mills, Brent Othman from Don Mills, and of course Shane Wright from Don Mills. Francisco Pinelli played for the Red Wings. Danny Ziklip played for the. I tw- thought he was a Russian. Remember, I th- he is. He was born in Moscow. Oh, well, and then right. he's uh, but he got Canadian citizenship and he played. When did he come over here? Come on, just come um, over here. Probably a couple of years before we saw him. So yeah. in uh, so he would have been like fourteen, I think. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Ethan Del Mastro played for the Marlies and Wyatt Johnson. So they all pl- they, they all played for uh, the GTHL the one year. Three of them played for Marlies, didn't they? I mean, uh, two played for the Marlies and three played for Don Mills. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Any imagine if it had been Canadian announcers, and uh, well, there were Canadian announcers. Can you imagine if if the states say say uh, seven guys came from uh, one league in the states? Why they that's the greatest thing in the world. Nothing is even mentioned. And the winning goal. Tell us about the winning goal. Uh, that the, the well, the, the, yeah, like the the big in the final game. The the big one was. Um, uh, Don, it was the Don Mills trio, we'll call them. They, they, they played together for Don Mills. They were seven on their minor midget year. They were seventy and one. <laughs> they, they lost one game in overtime in a in a in a uh, in a tournament. But it was Brent Clark who was the defenseman. Brent Othman who was and they were uh, the winning was, goal. And the- and, and uh, Shane Wright. So Othman had a goal, had a goal and an assist that game. And played for uh, Don Mills. Eh? Played for Don Mills. Wright had two goals. And uh, Clark had a, had an assist, but the funny thing was that they were together on the OHL Cup. And the, people don't know what the OHL Cup is. It's all the best kids at that under under seventeen uh, age or minor midget age, and they all played together in a tournament. And they get they get guys up from the Michigan, from the states, and from New York to play. And um, it was a big deal because they started broadcasting it on Sportsnet. And yeah, it was I, well. I, let's tell the real story. They started it, broadcasting. Why they started broadcasting it? Because you remember you weren't you. This wasn't this the one that you well, wanted. Scott, to, Scott Moore. Yes, he was the head guy, and you it. thought it was awful that they didn't televise it I on remember, TV. I remember your rate, Cindy. And then they and then what did they say? Okay, we'll televise it. How about you and Ron do it? No, and you and Ron. Well, I'll do it. So I remember the first game. Where where was that matinee? They had it at um, the the Madame Center, which is the old Maple Leaf. And Gardens. it looks just like the map. Can I tell you a story about that? I'm standing there before the game matinee. How do you sell it? Madame. Madame. And uh, this guy came in, a young guy came in, and we were standing looking. He says, "You know, I'm the son. I, I don't know his name. Anyhow, he he says we had to clean this up. He says, and he says I remember we came in." And we steamed everything, everything to keep it. And we come in the next morning, and it was all brown all over the seats. And I, I'm thinking, what the heck? And it was the nicotine. In the old days, they had smoked, you know, like, and, and it went all up the ceiling, and it was all brown on the ceiling. And when they put the steam on, it all fell on the seats. Right, but, yeah. but some people won't realize what you're talking in the sense of it's the top of the Maple Leaf Gardens. Yeah. It's a rink on, and when you look up, you can still see the roof of the old Maple Leaf Gardens, and they have really done it up oh, nice. Oh, they did a great job. They yeah. saved all those old you pictures swear it was the, of the, gardens, the uh, yeah. that were used to be in the gardens. I mean, when you used to go to the Toronto Maple Leaf Gardens, I know I just walked the halls looking at all those gorgeous yeah. pictures, and then I often wondered, gee, I wonder what they did with them all, and there they all are. It's the oh, top of Ryerson, right? It's the top yeah. of Ryerson, too. Anyhow, yeah. that's where they, and they had, so anyhow, I said to um, Scott Moore, I said, okay, Scott, you know, and I give him heck. I said, that's a great game and all that stuff. He's okay, we'll put it on the matinee. And he said, you and Ron will do it. <laughs> okay, all right, we'll do it. And I remember the first game, the very first game, v- the very first game. There wasn't a soul that's there. to right. say We were standing there about an half hour before there wasn't a soul. 
is holy smokes what if nobody comes out to see the game so we actually went over to the other side that was being tele that would be shows yeah. just so it looked like there were some bodies yeah, and all in of the a seats. sudden people started to come in and yeah well and you we, know what dad can i equate it to something else that when you and bobby started the uh, prospect games when you started that oh, how yeah. many moons ago nobody would go to those games no. that was in the gardens that and that was in the gardens i remember we actually sat the family sat behind the bench just to make it look like there was people right? there. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember Dell playing with his Buzz Lightyear toys in the back. But anyway, um, and then look how it grew. And I think yeah, that the potential... Yeah, then he got rid of, got rid of me, <laughs> not Bobby. Yeah. But what I'm trying to equate is that I think that the OHL Cup almost had the same type of momentum going. Yes, it and had better this, and great games. Oh, yeah. I went to them too, and it was a lot. It was something to see. Overtime goals. And, oh, yeah. to, and you and you would be lovely enough. To, you'd go down and give them their medals, and uh, it was really yeah. a nice, a, a great, great I time. Do you think that'll come back? No. No. It was Scott no, Moore. So, you don't it, think that they, they would won't. televise it? No. No, they didn't, because they, they, the one year they had it, they didn't televise it. And that's the one thing. The one thing with the sports networks, like uh, in Canada, they do nothing to oh, promote amateur geez, sports. They, they run some, you know, Cur they, well, they they run some commercials and stuff like that. But I like it, the one where they have the kind of a commercial, a kid can't even skate. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, in the States, they do, like like ESPN and that. They show high school or high school games yeah, and they do yeah. stuff. They, they, you know, they feel they have to give back. in the Canadian things... They have no, absolutely no... Well, they, but they, don't you, Tim, don't you sort of blame, like, why wouldn't Hockey Canada push that more to have the big they don't rate TV stations they don't and care. all that? They don't I care. mean, there's a perfect example. Well, they should be promoting it. Well, there's a perfect example of seven guys uh, from the GTHL. I don't think the GTH might have been mentioned once. But, I mean, seven guys, seven, seven out of... Out of well, they, they were the main guys, and, and Shane Wright... And we've been watching Shane Wright since when? Uh, well, he was we first saw him when he would have been uh, thirteen. It was the first time we saw I him. I tell you a funny story about that. When he get over the line, he do what Gretzky used to do when there was nobody to pass it to. He'd go on the right hand side, never go on the left hand side. Go on the right hand side, and he look for guys coming in and he he feed them then. But he used to do that all the time. He never tried to score, eh, Tim? No, nope. no. He, he he thought an assist was as good as the. As a goal, <laughs> he was he was a team player. That's well, what he his was a team player, but no, oh, he was even he's more. He was even more than that. He was like he never, never tried to shoot. So, well, who was his uh, agent? I, uh, I can't remember the the guy. Well, we remember it next year. Yeah, he, he has Bedard too. Yeah, same he, guy represents Bedard and him. Yeah, woo, he's got two beauties coming. We'll uh, we'll find out by next year, mm. by next game, or I call, call it the next game. But anyhow, I, he said to him, would you have lunch with him? I said, no, I won't have lunch with him, Shane Wright, because if I do it with him, then I'd end up doing it with everybody. So I said, just tell him one thing. I tell, I tell him, tell, I, tell, yeah. I won't I match the cars. I'll say, guys that score drive expensive cars. Guys that pass drive cheap cars. <laughs> By golly, the next week, got a hat trick. The next yeah, game. yeah. Well, and just just to kind of get back to the OHL Cup, they were they they were down three. I think he three, had bad back too. Yeah, he was down Same three way. three nothing uh, to the Red Wings, and they had a player in his name Anton Fentelli, which oh, people, and I like him he'll, too, boy. He'll, he'll, he'll be he'll yeah. be a high draft. Remember pick. that name, Fentelli. And uh, I said, no, Don Mills will come back. And sure enough, went into overtime. It was uh, what was the score? I think it was four five five. And it went from Clark, who was one of the best, yeah. better defensemen on the, the under 18, to Wright, to Offman. And that's what happened in... Um, and that's, what, that's who scored the winning goal. Yeah. So you know, I, I, I think that they were thinking of... I, 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 hope, I hope everybody... Just before we get into that, though, you know the one thing that I really did notice, Dad? But just talking about Dave Barr, we kind of got off on the subject, is that yeah. we, he's been around forever yeah. and, and yeah. been all over the place. So he knows... And again, he's one of those guys that wasn't, you know, he had to survive by his wits, you know, wasn't an overly skilled. Well, can I name the places he's been? So yeah. Today, he, he, I wrote it down. He's been with the Bruins. He's been with the Rangers. He's been with Hartford. He's been with Detroit, New, uh, New Jersey. And uh, I think he's with Dallas, too. And he coached in uh, the IHL. He coached in the American League. He, 
Yeah, he was an assistant, so he knows what's going on. So he should fired. he should be the coach for for Team Canada. Like yeah. he should go to the next level, and then when the juniors come, he should be the coach because he's coached against. Yeah, he's calm. He's very calm. But you know the one thing I really noticed, Dad, is that he got the kids to flip the puck out, and you don't see that in the NHL anymore. You know, it's a funny and, thing. And, I used to every pack every coach's corner. I used to mention that. And you're right. You know, in, in National Hockey League, you very seldom see that anymore. No, but he. But when they when the, they were ahead of the Russians, when they got up, as soon as the fence looked up, we saw they recovered because the Russians, what they did, they yeah, were just knows. they weren't forechecking. They were just lining Line guys up. up on their blue line, and he just had them flip it out, flip, flip it, up. it over them. Now the young kids sometimes they have a trouble flipping it out. <laughs> and the one you know kid, the one kid dropped an f bomb. By he, the way, by the way, flip it in here. If <laughs> I don't think about this, I'll, if I don't say it, I'll forget it. I noticed in the National Hockey League they've stopped that silly uh, uh, power play. Yeah, they where don't the guy do it. they don't do it anymore. <laughs> that would be so. All you'd have to do is if the wingers are covered, have the defense stand up. So they stopped that silly thing. That was I remember last year I, or the last year I was on. I said this is most the silly thing I've ever seen in my life. So they don't do that anymore anyhow. Yeah. But I'd like to I'd like to talk about uh, Roy. Now, how do you pronounce that name, Tim? Pechanovsky. Pechanovsky. Now, I hope you remember, if you remembered, his three, three of his, uh, he was murdered, and his, his uh, mother was murdered, her, Chrissy, and his sister, Vanna, I think was, was her name, and uh, they played Bantam uh, together in 2000. Right, he was the Don Mills goalie, and uh, the year before, we, we really watched him and the minor midgets, and yeah. he was with uh, Shane Wright and all those guys, and he was with the team that uh, he was going. They were going to win the championship. Yeah, they won the championship before, and then this year they were. And then the next year they were. This was the big year, right? This like that's the big year because all the OHL scouts are watching, and C in the um, NCAA scouts are watching. And you know, the, and that summer yeah, he was he was he murdered. Uh, he was murdered with his mom and his younger well, sister. Well, allegedly murdered or whatever you want to call it. Um, and. Um, he was a terrific goalie. He he was like he was uh, he he was that uh, he was fantastic, and um, so the next year I think they out of seventy games they only lost and um, yeah, they lost, they lost one. one game in overtime. I think it was a I think it was a it was in Detroit a tournament. or something. Yeah, and he was he was fantastic, and they scored and they wore his number, uh, his number. Uh, what was his number? Seventy four. Seventy four. Yeah. yeah, and uh, they wore his number like in the OHL Cup, and I'm sure they were thinking of, and they scored the winning goal in that, in, in, in the OHL Cup, and they scored, and the three of them scored the goal in Canada Cup, and I'm sure they were thinking of um, Roy uh, Othman, he, was, he got the winner, eh? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Othman was yeah, the Arthur, Yeah, and uh, I, I bet you they were thinking of, of, of Roy. I hope, I'm sure they were thinking of Roy. Um, what a sad say, and he would have been the goaltender. He he was fantastic, and uh, I just want to mention his name. Uh, and we met his dad, a eh, Voss. Yeah, and he stood by himself down in the corner. Yeah, he used Boy, to go. Used to go yeah, he used to still go to the games and stuff. You know, because that's people don't realize that aren't into hockey how that becomes your not the parents' social life, right? Like yeah, you're with sure the rink, you're you're with the, the parents every day. Cause and a lot of times it's the same. It's the same team. They just move up. It's right. the yeah. same players. Yeah. Like so. they, he would have been together for probably three years. Like they, three years, the parents, you know, and you they, know, there's a lot of time to they kill. They had a family rooms. going. Yeah. And and, uh, and you you know, Dell was. Well, you go to tournaments together, you go to practices together. There's a lot of time that you're just hanging around the rink, so you get to be pretty close with the other parents. Well, right? I just wanted to bring his name up, too, because I, I thought it was ironic that the th three guys from the GTHL got the winning goal in the Canada Cup, and then they get, and three guys got the, the three guys got the, the, that were involved in uh, yeah, the, the OHL 18. Cup. Well, the two guys I want to mention as we end. Connor McDavid, we could do we could do Connor McDavid every week. I mean, this guy, the best hockey player in the world. There's no, there's nobody can, nobody's even close as far as I'm concerned. And I, and what did he get? A hundred points. He got a hundred. He got his hundredth point, and what was it? Fifty, fifty three games, I think it is. Fantastic. So I think they said he would have been. He could have got if it was a regular season. He might, he might have hit 150, oh, 160 points. The way he was going, he was getting three points every night. Holy smokes. 
So, yeah, that's the one thing. Just just to say, uh, you know, our, our sponsor is Spreads.ca, and it's a First Nations online casino and sports book, and it's tailored to Canadians. And playoffs are coming up. Sign up now, and you uh, and use the code Grapes. You get five hundred dollars, and uh, your first sports bet they give you a spot you twenty five bucks. But one of the big things there, which is kind of cool, is you can do what they call prop bets. Oh, yeah. So you, a prop bet is you can like. Every time Edmonton plays, you can bet whether Connor McDavid is going to score, <laughs> and you can bet whether he's going to score in the first period, second period, third oh, period, or kidding. just or or overall. Well, it could be going to be a little different in the playoffs. Yeah. So, but or I just said if you just set, kept dropping ten bucks on Connor McDavid scoring a goal, <laughs> he, no, he, will they be ticked off if I give my uh, who should win and upsets? No, they want you to do it. They want to. They want to give you. Uh, they we're we'll we'll do it. Like, like it's kind of weird. Some of the teams are done yeah. now, and there's some teams got seven games left so and one game got postponed the other day so we'll we'll do one that'll be just strictly the playoffs and who's going to beat who okay but we know it looks like uh well we don't know like because we, we don't, don't know, know if winnipeg or montreal that's not yeah, yeah we don't know what's going to go on but um yeah but connor brown he got he had uh, 19 goals and he played in the gthl played for the marlies his dad coached uh dan dan brown and he coached, but he coached he's, his son. But he coached a long, a long time, and was yeah. A, he knows a, what's going and on. He, and he, uh, he, he's in the Etobicoke, which is. Just I've a, always liked Connor Brown. Yeah, he's in the Hall of Fame for a, a lot of the stuff that he's. Um, he was. He's really been big in minor hockey, but uh, now Ottawa. I'll give you some advice. They can't let that team go. DJ Smith is a good coach, but if you're going to let guys go, if you're not going to pay them the dough, they're going to leave. I don't. I mean, that's the way life is. I mean, life. You go where the money is. I mean, yeah. uh, the money, and uh, they have to keep that team together. They can't let Connor Brown go. They can't let the uh, the Tay Chucks go. They can't let they can't let those guys go. No, because if if they had any goaltending in the first month, yeah, they'd be right in the thick of the playoffs. Yeah, oh, you better believe it. And the way they're going now, and I, you know, I don't pay attention to teams that are out of the playoffs because you used to tick me off when I would be fighting for. Uh, for you know, with Buffalo, like we said, for the la- in the last couple of weeks, we play a team in October, and they were lousy. We play the same team, you know, and they no pressure on them, and you know, loosey goosey, you know, who cares? And I remember one time, Colorado, I, I, and they had to go through our bench. I said, where up you guys in October, and they beat us in the Boston Gardens. Oh, yeah. and the Boston Gardens, I remember. And they put their sticks in the air as if they'd won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> oh, was I mad? I could see the headlines. I could see that. Yeah, because we a... never lost the Gardens, oh. and uh, and they beat us. We we, we thought they would they were going to throw in their sticks, and they didn't. And you know you have to admire them. But they don't quit. But boy, where were they in October? When anyhow, forget that. Ottawa's not like that. They no. they. I look at the shots on net; they're about even or or they're hit. Well, yeah, when they were when they were losing, they were out shooting teams. Yeah, so he's a good coach. The the they cannot let players go to other teams for more money. They, if they if you if you're going to stay in the game and you want to be good, you got to spend the money. Anyhow, Connor Brown, I just thought I'd mention his name. Uh, I'm not putting him with McDavid, but he's still a good player. <laughs> <laughs> 